Greetings programs. I know that our world is affected by human malware right now, but let's put on our rose colored glasses for a moment and imagine a time when we would just hang out to talk about privacy with several amazing people. Hello world and welcome to the TechLore Privacy Panel where we'll be discussing privacy between several amazing people. Hey Henry, I just said that. <laughs> Seriously though, even though the world is crazy right now, I think it's still important to continue the dialogue about surveillance, encryption, reclaiming privacy, and more. And if you haven't seen that panel, you need to, if not just to correct me on forgetting the name of a really iconic book. Did we mention we're also gonna break encryption? Like they're just, you know, the, the vast majority of people are just gonna like hone in on Oh, it's for our protection, you know, and then we're like that um, a sci-fi sci book that I can't think of the name of. Somebody help. Awkward. <laughs> they correct me, don't worry. If you came here from that panel, though, good job. This video has our tangents, our rants, some really funny bloopers, and uh, if you want the cliff notes or an amalgamation of both, Switch to Linux, this channel has a highlight reel that you can also check out. All the links will be in the description below. Rose colored glasses, like means optimism and about being optimistic about privacy and the state of the world. Be optimistic. Be yourself. Okay, these, this isn't me. <laughs> Are we all ready? Should we do Mortal Kombat like fight? <laughs> I guess I'll start recording now. And then we say hello, three letter agencies. Hello. <laughs> a recap of the rules, okay? No one gets a free, I am, I am the Lord of this chat and I get to deem whether or not someone Lord. violates the rule and I will mute people except for Nixie who is who's host actually. So she could actually mute me, but we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Elitism. So there's a story that's happened probably a few days in our matrix room. And I think generally speaking, the more advanced and more privacy friendly things are, typically the more elit elitism you're going to see. Um, someone in our matrix community was asking about using two-factor authentication for their personal lives. And they were very set on wanting something cloud-based. They said they didn't want the inconvenience of having multiple devices. They said they wanted to have access to two FA codes in the event they lose a device. Um, someone recommended Authy. Someone else came in and said, you shouldn't use Authy. You're going to get hacked. Uh, you know, Authy is just not as good as a local authenticator. It's not as secure. It's not as private. You should never trust this service. And I, I am picking on Authy here because it's probably one of the most popular 2FA apps. Um, it is cloud-based and it requires a phone number. But I think people are really missing the core point, which is having 2FA is more secure than having SMS 2FA. Having SMS 2FA is still more secure than having no 2FA. And I did ask this individual who made this a big deal, I asked them, hey, can you actually provide any evidence that shows that using a cloud-based two-factor authentication solution is actually a security drawback that it impacts people on a wide, on a wide scale? Um, and they said, no. So it really is just for the sake of being more secure and more private. And if you aren't re meeting, meeting those standards, like you're, yeah. you're not good enough to be part of the social circle. Um, and I'm sure Nick sees you're this all the time because you like you're in the privacy tools IO communities, and this is something that you guys combat as well. Um, exactly. You know, we've banned gatekeeping. It's not something we tolerate. If you do something like that, we act against it. Um, and I know you do the same thing too. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about elitism as well as solutions towards it. I have to start by saying, I use Arch, by the way. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I use Gen2. Oh, no. <laughs> no, actually, I use Linux Mint for main production, but uh, it's a hilarious Alitas joke if you didn't get it. <laughs> yes. I love the, they, they have this, uh, I don't want to, what is it, a diptych when it shows like the progression of images and they show Ubuntu and then the, the, the beard on the neck gets longer and longer. And then once you get to Gen2, it's like just a beard or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. Elitism is a problem we get, and that's that sometimes I think drives people away from the, the privacy world, which is sad. 
because we we need to strike a balance. Those of us that are more in the know about these things need to be a little bit more patient with those who are not in the know. But at the same time, uh, we don't want to be so far out there that if we become so elitist, you have zero options for anything. At some point in time, you're going to have to give up something for something, unless you want to go live in a cave for the rest of your life. Yeah, and you're also not the majority. That um, All day, every day, for 10 years, I talk to end users. And all day, every day, I get people that are Gen 2 users or some power users that are saying like, you know, the solution is infinitely inferior because of X, Y, and Z and some elitist thing. Um, and it's gotten so bad that I've literally had th soup thrown at me after a conference because I promoted Ubuntu and not, you know, Arch or something like well, that. I forget what it was. That's synonymous with the devil. Yes, Ubuntu, yeah. recommending Ubuntu. That's totally not, not problematic at all. Some people never have made a feel about that. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if you're the one that answered my email, <laughs> Nate, but I actually emailed and said, why don't you have Ubuntu in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but it's it's when you are such a advocate to the point where it's stifling anybody's ask or ability, just like with Authing, the the criteria that they had that wasn't really like a conversation or something up for debate, then you risk, you know, people not caring about privacy at all that otherwise might have if you would have been more approachable. You meaning general you, not yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that, uh, that one of the perspectives uh, that often changes uh, this towards other people, one thing you can consider is that we are basically the, uh, the, pri the privacy vegans. You know how sometimes uh, some vegans can be very hardcore about their cause? Well, it's a, bit, a little bit the same with privacy. If you are yeah. too hardcore, you only drive people away instead of inviting them into the lifestyle. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important to be inclusive to the best of our ability. Um, I do think, you know, um, when I ask someone to do something like, for example, have a local key ring instead of using a cloud based one, um, I'm asking them to take more responsibility um, and they better be ready for it or I'm kind of doing the wrong thing. Right. Um, yeah. So it also, you know, there's a certain amount of responsibility that the educator or the advocate has to take on as well um you can't just say hey because people lose things they get to you know and then if you lose your encryption key you lose your stuff <laughs> like it's yeah. a big deal um, but what about there's your no Bitcoin going back wallet. that's why it's so powerful right um so anyway um you know i do think if people use these cloud services you know that's fine what they need to understand a little better is that these are network services. They're controlled by someone or some entity and your level of trust needs to be evaluated. You know, like you need to evaluate how much you trust this group, person, organization, government. Um, and, you know, a lot of folks are going to reflexively do this in a rush, be forced to do it, you know, in some work or school context and so on. Um, I suppose fighting for choice would at least allow us to start having this conversation. <laughs> But realistically, most people who are involved in IT or the internet connected world um, in any realistic sense are using a combination of stuff, right? Local stuff, cloud stuff, and so on. So it's kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say besides the point, but um, if the hardcores want to pretend they're hardcore, you know, I would be surprised if there isn't some chink in their armor that we can find. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I mean, a targeted attack is you know, uh, com total access is, what is it, com total, I'm trying to remember the, the phrase. I don't have my cyber something security X. helmet on while Yeah, I was just like, mind. something access is something <laughs> access. Oh, come on. I was going to say, if this makes it comments, please tell me what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> Through the um, entire video, please tell me what I'm trying to say. But, you know, conversely, I don't want to always say, well, we got to threat model that. We got, you know, because yeah, then I think true. also that gets too complex for people. So I don't know if there's an easy answer there, but um, mm -hmm. I think, Henry, you identified very well stopping the gatekeeping conversation is really important because otherwise how can you even have dialogue so yeah yeah uh, and i do wish that um uh, mr shaw from enemy the surveillance state uh, he was supposed to be in this call but he unfortunately couldn't make it um one thing he says in his podcast is at one point in time you didn't know how to use a fork 
Um, and it's true. Like we've all been in a position where we didn't know about privacy. We weren't born knowing how to be private online. Most likely we were just like everyone else, the 99% who just started using services, started using social media because that's the norm. And at some point we started to learn about it and we were just as lost as some of the people we talked to are. And that perspective change is really important sometimes to remember. Um, yeah, I wish he was here to be able to say that himself, but I'm sure he would say something like that. Uh, I'm but wondering if, 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 every, if everybody knows the their, uh, quote unquote point of salvation that caused <laughs> you to start thinking about these. I know for me, I was doing a website for somebody who is an AMSOIL salesperson, right? And so I had to log into his AMSOIL account to do grab some code for his website. And wouldn't you know it, every single website, every single search, all I'm seeing is Amsoil, 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 Amsoil. To this day, I will never buy that crap. <laughs> I don't care how good it is because it's just so, but it's like, I'm, I started looking into it, like, why in the world am I seeing Amsoil all over the place? Well, it turns out that because I looked it up once on Google. Wow. And it's just like, okay, it's time to do something about this. <laughs> okay, no, no, I'm actually kind of curious. What's, what, what were you guys? On? point of salvation, privacy-wise, actually. What was the point uh, that everything just clicked and you went down the rabbit hole? Oh, Nick, wow. so you go first. Okay. The first one is kind of creepy, but essentially <laughs> I, it was during the time of Yahoo and Hotmail and whatnot. And apparently I got actually a targeted attack and what the person did was they apparently embedded just like a one pixel by one pixel JPEG into my uh, email that somehow gained access to my email, found out my address. This is really creepy. Sorry. Warning. Creepy. creepy alert. Um, which is why I have uh, creepy things they know about you as a um, segment in one of my YouTube videos, which I also call properly paranoid because this is exactly what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, so they got my address and then they sent me a letter with a, apparently also in my email, I had a picture of myself photoshopped over that. And then they, they sent it to me in the mail with no uh, return address label. Yeah. <laughs> Is that oh like conversation God. ending for everyone? <laughs> um, oh, <kind> yeah. of. <laughs> <laughs> also, that person, I don't know if you remember, several years later, there was, I'm, I'm not going to blast their name, but it was uh, so-and-so, uh, he was a, com um, he abused his uh, admin privileges at Google, and essentially Google did something that was unprecedented at the time. They were like, this person is dead to us. They put their name on blast, and they had to go in hiding because they used their uh, admin privileges to spy on other people. Um, yeah, that was the same person who hacked me like 10 years prior. That's why I always warn people about it. It's not necessarily does the company have a good privacy policy, but does every person <laughs> in that company actually agree to it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that's not something you can fight against. Like, that, that's kind of one of those things. It's, if you're targeted for attack, you know, basically everything we've been talking about for two hours mm -hmm. is kind of moot. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was a guy I covered in my news this week that uh, from ADT, he was actually had logged into some like 400 customers accounts and was watching their news feed of them um, in their yeah, bedrooms so privately at night. Yeah. At least Fun. they're secure, right? <laughs> they're very secure. <laughs> he was making sure no burglars were coming in. He was hey, watching closely. Maybe he's just a very huge advocate for safe sex. We don't know. <laughs> there you go. Um, he like busts in there like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> no. Sean, what's your story? I was born fully for no. no. <laughs> for privacy Leech aware. Speak as a baby. Um, yeah. no, I, uh, <laughs> I got on the internet at, at a relatively young age. Um, so I was doing websites, uh, terrible websites in places like GeoCities uh, when I was 13 and 14. Um, and I think the experience of sort of peeking behind the cur curtain um, gave me an early exposure to some of the issues. Um, not just privacy issues, but sort of like internet freedom issues. Um, I didn't really, I think, feel like I was in the privacy and security business, so to speak, um, until I was running servers on relatively uh, vulnerable, relatively large networks. Um, and, you know, like Nixie's talking about someone who was a total creep, who was a sysadmin, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you sort of, <laughs> and so was Tom with the ADT thing, right? Um, you sort of see that, you know, whoever has, you know, root super user privilege has that kind of power. And 
you can't really go back from that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, you view everything sort of in that lens. Um, so I can't really identify anything horrifying specifically, thankfully. Um, I've had enough issues in my life since then, but uh, yeah, that was after I announced myself to the world as being an elite hacksaw. So oh um, right, <laughs> so instead of super user do, you're like super user don't. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And how about you, Nick? Well, my story actually goes back to the first year of high school with Minecraft. Oh god, so, I feel old yeah. now. You, you guys oh. are young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the young one here. Yeah. So I was actually playing one of the first one of the first servers that actually went live with Minecraft. And with that, I also saw the first people get IP banned. And back at the, back in those days I was still kinda oblivious about how computers worked, how about how networks worked. And I saw some some people actually log in again after they wear IP bands. And then I first heard them talking about something called proxies. So I started researching for what are proxies. Oh, so you can uh, evade bands with this. Oh, oh, so you can also fake uh, your location with this. And that that sort of get uh, get it. Well, the sort of the well. That got the ball rolling into yeah further technology, and then I discovered VPNs, and then I discovered Tor, and then the whole thing with Edward Snowden happened, and well, it just went down the rabbit hole uh, like that, and here we are today. <laughs> yeah, that that unlocks another like, what did you do personally when you became elite hacksaw? <laughs> discussion <laughs> like okay now you've unlocked Pandora's box like what was your first experience? in actually trying to do these things yourself, right? I was like, now yeah. everyone has to share that story. <laughs> I, let's just be honest, it was all just hackers, the movie hackers, where they were telefreaking was... and hacking the Gibson and going around on, was it rollerblades? Yeah. Crash override. I I, I, is, is, is hackers the movie where they like, were hacking on the telephone or something? Yeah, they were, they, no, the end was, scene um, was telefreaking. I, I'm so old, I think I saw that like on when TV it... the year after it came out in movie theaters or something. I was a kid when I saw it. <laughs> well, you might appreciate the fact that uh, in where I, around where I live, uh, we recreated it in the nightclub where we played the uh, on hackers on Projo and everyone was encouraged to wear rollerblades. And then we were listening to like- right? Van Halen's jump or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. And people were doing jump, yeah. It, my sort of that uh, out right. <laughs> Kevin Mitnick moment was when I was really young. I um, We had TRS-80s in the school nice I was term. in because they just were like way behind the times. Um, but it was good for me because I learned basic, which is cool. Um, but anyway, it was really, really easy to just um, create loops <laughs> in basic that would just go on until they filled all the memory and then just <laughs> own the machines. So yeah. it wasn't fire, it wasn't as cool as that, but I was able basically just to disable machines. It's like denial of service, like old school. Yeah, you, you just well, fill the available memory and then the yeah. teachers are like, well, what's going on here? And then suddenly <laughs> well, you don't have to do anything in computer class anymore. Um, so something I, I always did with batch files was then create a batch file which would basically open their browser about 10,000 times and then send them to nyan.cat. Oh, how fidelity. Yeah. But well, what it basically also, also did was remove their, bra their browser shortcut, then place the, the, the batch file there, then change the batch file's icon to their browser icon. So every time they, they would click their, on the icon of their browser, nyan.cat would open like 10,000 times on their, on their screen. And Are because everything the froze- the one that goes meow, 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 meow. Yes, exactly. Okay. Sorry, I just needed the appropriate, you know, <laughs> At least it wasn't the hamster dance. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. My oh, hacking wow. story is pretty embarrassing. Um, at, at school, uh, I was just learning how to mess with bat files. And my goal is to just make a simple bat file. It shows a notification if someone opens a program. Uh, and we all have our own drives at our school. It was shared across any computer. So you log in through your account and you have access to your files on the computer. And so what I did is I stored this bat file there. And what it did was when you open it, it opens up Tor browser on the, on the school's network. But before it does that, it comes up with a notification saying like, oh, like we've noticed 
the like, administration has noticed that you're using your <laughs> browser. Wow, uh, now, that's um, pretty intelligent for well, like, the school. goal is to trick like a friend. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would I would send them I would give them the file and then they'd open it and they'd be like, oh crap, I'm in trouble. And then it says to like go to the the, the office oh, and things like that. Yes. So it's a pretty big notification. It looks pretty legit. So I made that the first semester, right? And then I didn't, I just, I didn't do anything with it. I just made it and I put it away. And the next semester we had to access a website and it was blocked by school as always. And so I opened mm -hmm. it up and then the, the notification came up. I'm not joking. Like it came up and I'm just like, <sighs> I remember and, now. <laughs> and well, no, I was just like in shock. I'm like, oh my goodness, they actually started cracking down on this. And for the next two hours, oh. I was just like, oh my gosh. Like I was just waiting for the teachers, like the principal to walk in, because the way they do it is the principal walks in and they call you to the office. So I was just in class the whole time, like, oh my gosh, like when are they gonna come to my class to pick me up? And then I was eating lunch and then I was just eating my sandwich. I'm like, oh my gosh, I made that as a prank. And I pranked myself. <laughs> from like six months ago <laughs> it's oh just a prank <laughs> yeah well you should be happy because that prank could have ended up in an entirely different way where you hear like this uh, sirens go off and everyone's being evacuated to some like other other like gymnasium are you speaking from experience no <laughs> no you should never never mess with the school infrastructures that's bad news bears yeah <laughs> No, yes. my, my, my like initiation into hacking is like mechanical of, in nature. Um, <clears throat> like I hooked up uh, breadboards and I was uh, one of the things that I really wanted to do was make like a tur. This is going to sound really like homicidal, but I promise it's only nerfed arts. Um, mm -hmm. But basically just creating a turret that would uh, track and automatically shoot that I could put at the front of my door. And I thought it would be really, really cool to like have it track. And then as time went on, I wanted to take, if you guys have played Portal, they have this really cool voice that's like, are you still there? Scanning, scanning. So I used OpenCV and like tracked the blob of, of like uh, basically what the shape of said thing was to try to shoot ner nerf darts and it. It never really got very far, but it was like, it, it was just what I needed to like want to go to DEF CON every single year, like that's every awesome. year. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll go to DEF CON soon again. And yeah. See each other in person. The year after this year is still good, right? Hopefully. I, I did want to ask, Nick, you're in contact with with so many projects. Has there been a project that come across your table that that aims to address uh obviously you deal with decentralized projects, which I do indirectly, if not directly, try to address this issue. Is there a project that actually has promise to try to take away control from big tech or governments? Like that's their sole mission or goal? Well, not exactly that, but we have been bombarded with like tens of thousands of, uh, of different little companies who want to promote their new uh, fancy blockchain technology that will change the privacy world and communication <laughs> forever. Yeah, that's it's, it, it, at these days, they will go just straight to the spam box because there's so many data hawks out there. They, 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 also, people just offering shitloads of money as well. It's, it's absolutely crazy. I, I, I'm sure, like, I'm sure probably all of us receive, at least maybe not to the level you do, but I think all of us have received some of those emails. The next VPN yeah. to make you anonymous with, Perfect. with a yeah. blockchain technology, AI, machine um, learning, anonymous. I <laughs> rely on your VPN series. Yeah. That's so do I. I sent you to you, man. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Henry, oh. you deal with the VPNs. What are you talking right. about? Sorry. Hey, I, guess I'm... I, I built a VPN for my office when I'm not here. That's, you know. Um, I do I want to mention, though, um, Brave Browser <laughs> so actually implements the IPFS protocol recently, which is a step towards a decentralized web. So it's like, man, as much as I want to keep hating Brave, I just, I can't. That's the problem with Brave. I, I know. Every time I use it, I'm like, I want to hate this so much. And I always <laughs> love it. So I can, Brave I can so give you a way to hate it. A reason to hate it. I think I already know what you Do you? They uh, took out an account in my name and uh, oh. people were uh, essentially donating to me and then let me know that it was, if I wanted to well, get the, uh, the crypto that was stored all... for me. We that all I had the to. Well, they we did that for it. 
everybody. And yep. I've been telling people since the beginning, I said, I will not That's do so... that. So don't do that thinking I'm going to receive benefit. From that, that has to be so illegal. I know. <laughs> like, is your, is I, well, since the, when did I problem. have a trust in my name that said Brave all over it? Yeah, well, that's the that's the problem um, that I have with Brave is that the, the product itself is good. That's... It's the company behind it I have serious concerns with. That's that's the thing. Like I, I love the browser itself, and the moment I open it, I have to turn off all the garbage and all the crypto stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they push out an update. Oh, sweet new Binance widget on Android. Oh, I got to turn that off again. <laughs> like, gosh <Yeah>. darn it. <laughs> My alternative extension was NoScript that literally blocked all JavaScript and made every single page I loaded uh, completely unusable. And I'd have to go and like you know itemize mm -hmm. each privacy allowance and this and that and. So Brave was a good solution to that. But yeah, just like give us an option to knock it off with the crypto crap, please. Yeah. And, and well, this is speaking well, from someone who started braver, a crypto company. <laughs> well, Nikki, maybe Braver browser is an option for you. Look, I don't think that thing's happening. I'm sorry. I, I'm in well, their Discord I, server and I checked their GitHub and it's there hasn't been there, updates in months. There oh. is also Decenter browser, which is a fork of Brave. They took it out. It's by the Gab team. The, oh, I've, oh, I've read yeah. it's out of date though by months. It, it is might that be the same the Gab problem? team I that I um, that basically has all these uh, that has their chat application that they were like, we're not going to be censored and we're all about freedom of speech. And I was like, oh, yeah, yes. yes. And then I downloaded it and it was like, alt right, alt right, <laughs> QAnon. Well, the, the problem actually in the last couple of weeks, they've actually had a number of people banned recently from Gab, which is very shocking. Yeah, but they um, also like constantly push out Breitbart feeds and stuff in their Twitter. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I don't think that you like whatever up, down, left, right. It doesn't matter your stance. We talked about this, but like maybe not on a corporate Twitter account. Maybe. Yeah, well, the, the guy that runs it is uh, he's an interesting character for sure. Um, and if you say something bad about him, that seems to be what gets you banned. <laughs> oh, maybe you could send him one of your like you have a tinfoil hat back there, like makeshift yeah, well, tinfoil hats for people. <laughs> um, in, in my in my uh, more Christian circles where Gab is more popular than I roam around in, we do use Gab quite a bit more. Um, and uh, a couple people in those circles who are not controversial at all, they were banned off of Gab for disagreeing with him on something. Um, That's really so interesting, true, yeah. because it's like supposed to be a platform, but you do have it's, like this yeah. subculture behind it. Like, yeah, I, well, I, I think it, it became what you're saying it, it became because everyone kept getting banned off of other platforms. And so you, it, they just <laughs> concentrated they, there. Oh. I mean, it's kind of like Bitchu. Like if you access Bitchu, it's it's probably half half of it's just conspiracy theories. I don't even I don't even think it's a political belief. No, it's it's actually not. I use the homepage. Bitchu quite extensively. Um, if I if we want to pull up the homepage right now, we can do it. Maybe it's the algorithm. <laughs> maybe it's algorithmic, right? Well, no, like it's, they start it's not. sending you conspiracy um, theories. If so they, don't, they send you normal stuff. When you load up when you load up Bitchu, the default first page, if you're not logged in, it should be either trending or it should be the order of a video that it was uploaded. So if you're the brand new first creator, first ever video, and you happen to load up the web page, that video from that completely unknown creator will be the very first thing that you see. Wow. And then if they have a subscribe subscription tab where the people you subscribe to, you click on that and you, uh, you go over there and uh, it's going to show you just the videos from them. You're, and then, like, Tom, the top you're creator, debunking, like you're debunking my like I know, uh, apprehension I know. to go to like DTube and library. Um, yeah, instance, so like because the, of the same reason. The number one, the number one guy on BitChute is Stex and Hammer six six six. He is a complete centrist libertarian. He is not a conspiracy theorist one way or the other. Uh, number, I think in the top five, like Computing Forever's there. Um, he's actually a liberal. Um, who is doing a lot of, he was kind of shut, you know, shuttered from YouTube for his discussions on COVID stuff, which. Yeah, know, well, you get shadow um, banned for even using the word COVID as yeah, I found yeah. out. <laughs> So I don't know. I you, think we're we're diving off topic. Here. Yeah. This is our guys, this is our bonus features. If, it is. If you guys want, I just sent a, a link to the homepage. You can open it in an incognito window. Mm -hmm. um, what, right, what do you say? We we're doing a test. Yeah, I. Oh, God. So, I was like, do you want a screen share? 
You know, one of the one of the issues here, obviously, is that alternative networks and uh, software have to rely on some sort of funding to be able to scale at all. Um, so right, I think right. the use of cryptocurrencies or a subscription model, um, either of those two things are pretty much the only way to go. Um, yeah. Which is why you see so That's much of it. So much of it. Where, where blockchain's concerned, blockchain's I, understand I understand the skepticism, the skepticism but I actually think there's, 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 an, there's, an, echo there's an echo going. There's an echo Somebody's echoing. Yeah. But well, this isn't in the real uh, stream. Um, it has the opportunity to solve the shadow banning problem because having a distributed ledger that you can actually view, um, even if it's moderated, you'd be able to tell it's moderated. Um, and that would be really interesting to see scaling in a real network in the real world. Um, so, well, why don't they moderate them, though? So you can moderate on the front end, but it's good to have the transparency of the blockchain showing that the post exists. Okay, the that process. was where you echoed. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you, but... you kind of know why, or you at least know it happened. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like right now, I, I can't say initially upon first glance that I can tell that it's happening on BitChute, but that doesn't mean that it's not. Maybe right. it's something that is curated more if I log in and give it more of a chance. Because yeah, you know. if you log into BitChute, you can completely customize what it looks like. Um, but the interesting but... thing about Gab is that they use Mastodon, right? So it also means that federated Mastodon. servers that have too much control in the node, so you have an authoritarian control over one server then who cares if it's a federated service? You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's basically a centralized service that happens to send some information in and out to other networks. Huh. Anyway. Right, everyone. Well, dang, I, why I did think... you blow my mind before we have to talk about something else? No, I was <laughs> <Right>. like, oh. <laughs> um, we'll probably include it at the end. Maybe just a little bonus if people want some extra content there. <laughs> um, but I think it's let's... good not to diss a specific project, to be honest with you, but that's No, 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 totally. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to stifle any any project because yeah. that's how we get where we are. I'll, I'll say BitChute drives me crazy, but I use it as a backup for my systems. I, I, from my experience, BitChute was terrible from a creator perspective. Oh, like was, the upload like... and hey, library is a lot better for that. Everything syncs automatically. Library my whole awesome. channel my channel went from YouTube to library overnight with zero effort. I just did the sign in with Google account. Boom, my channel was on library the next yeah. day. I'll, I'll consider going back to library in maybe six more months. I, I had a snafu with them and uh, pulled everything down. So. Why not join PeerTube? That's true. There's PeerTube. Yeah. Yep. Um, you can even host it for free on I actually, I actually started, started cross posting stuff to Rumble. Uh, Rumble actually allows monetization out of the box. That's nice. I have more, wait, like a thousand more questions about this. <laughs> so I'm just not going to say anything. Um, What's your tongue? Nick, your, your video's off. I don't know if that's on purpose. Oh, oh, no, that is not. There we go. All right. Okay. We are going to move on. Um, <laughs> so Henry, you know, every time you say it theoretically, something goes wrong. <laughs> If you don't know the history of how the Silk Road was taken down, it had nothing to do with all the surveillance. It was good old fashioned police work. <laughs> what was it? That's all that needs done. Wasn't it like Colonel Mustard literally in the library with a candlestick or whatever? He was like in and the they, library. It was Colonel Mustard in the library with the feuding couple and the computer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But they tracked him down to a copy shop. Guys so. left yeah. And then failed to pardon him last minute, just saying. Come on now. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> that that was something that also happened. Okay. Like, I tried to make it. I tried to make it sixty seconds, but like, there's so much to say. So. How about this? I have. Um, <laughs> I have two things I'm gonna show here. If it's the piece of paper white, I'm gonna hold this up to my screen. And then um, I'll try. That oh, that's good. That means you have okay. five to 10 seconds left. So if you can wrap up your thought in five to 10 seconds, just do it. And the black <laughs> means you're done. I love it. And, and and the black means like three seconds, I'm cutting you off. So and you, need, you, you need to finish your point. Okay. Right. Do you not give us the black card? No, but that oh. was... <laughs> oh. <laughs> there he is. Did I say something? No, you were you're muted good. for a half second. Oh, okay, okay. Next, we're gonna hand over to Neek. From Privacy Tools IO. Uh, 
Oh. You're muted. Yeah, you're muted. And those are all the introductions. All right. Do you want to introduce yourself? <clears throat> Is it weird to introduce myself? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Just gonna remove himself from the entire video. <laughs> just, just, like, just this floating entity. My name is Henry. I'm the owner of TechLore. We are trying to spread privacy and security to the masses. And this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time to bring different people together. And I'm just thrilled. I thank you so much for doing this, by the way. Like, yeah, totally. No, thanks. Really thanks appreciate it. <laughs> each and every one of you for coming on. This is, um, I'm really excited it worked out. Oh, hi. Uh, if you haven't yet, maybe you could check out Geek Beacon. Um, what are we kicking off there again, Henry? And they're kicking off an open geek culture festival in quarter three of 2021. We're actually partnered with Geek Beacon uh, in our Discord community. So we try to do things together when we can, and it's awesome. I hope you had as much fun watching that video as it was for us to make it. And again, Switch to Linux and TechLore's channel is in the description below, so you can check out the full panel as well as the highlights and clips. So let me know why you think privacy is important in the comments. It's pretty important, you should probably type about it. I want to know, and I might feature your comments on the next video. And because of the viewership of previous videos, I'm kind of convinced that YouTube has been Addo Ben Shaying my idios vey uh, from censorship say as their algorithm claims not to do. Um, so yeah, please subscribe and make sure to hit that bell down there because it lets me know that you care. And that rhymed. <laughs> I will talk nerdy to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>